Hello and welcome to this video on how to save the world from global warming. Global warming is a pressing concern to every nation. Rising oceans, adverse weather events, and effects on wildlife. It is generally accepted that the only answer to rising carbon dioxide is to reduce the use of fossil fuels and find sustainable energy sources. What if there was another option, one in which we could have all the good things? And this video proposes just such a solution. Power plants contribute nearly 10 billion tonnes of CO2 a year. About 25% or 2.8 billion tonnes of this are generated in the United States of America. This is a combination of oil, coal and sustainable fuels. Every 4 litres of fuel produce 11 kilograms of CO2 from vehicles in the United States of America. This comes from 263.6 million cars. This contributes significantly to the current 405 parts per million of carbon dioxide. This is a higher record than at any other point in history. Other contributors are industry, agriculture and aviation. It is expected that once we hit 530 parts per million, it will no longer be possible to stop a 2 degree rise in temperature. Recently, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has proposed converting every car to electric in the next 10 years, among other measures in her New Green Deal. In theory, this makes sense as transport does contribute significantly to carbon dioxide levels. The problem is practicality. Most people cannot afford to change their car, truck or motorbike, assuming there's a comparable model or option, to electric. Even if there was a subsidy scheme, this would still be a significant financial penalty. This ignores the need for private transport in many areas such as regional and rural towns. There is one area, not examined by AOC, that could drastically reduce CO2 emissions. What she has ignored is the contribution by humans. On a daily basis, the average woman will consume 2,000 kilocalories. A man will consume 2,500 kilocalories to maintain their weight. This ignores other variables such as nutrition, vitamins and minerals. For the purposes of this video, let's assume the primary purpose is to consume calories for energy and the method of getting other nutrients is just extra calories to this baseline. It is not efficient or elegant but simplifies the equation drastically. This energy has to come from plants, which consume carbon dioxide to produce the calories. Conversely, the average person will exhale 2.2 kilograms of carbon dioxide through respiration at rest each day. This figure will be higher or lower depending on the degree of physical activity. The average amount of CO2 in the atmosphere is 35.9 by 10 to the 11th power kilograms. Each individual is adding an average percentage of 2.257 to the negative 10th power each day. Overall, this is a relative contribution of 1.737% of CO2 to the atmosphere every day accounting for all 7.7 .7 billion humans on Earth. That is the total atmospheric CO2 emissions for any given day. Over a year, this produces a rounded figure of 1.7% of the total global atmospheric CO2 emitted. The average CO2 required to produce those 2,000 kilocalories for a woman is 0.7 kilograms. This means a female can consume the equivalent 
of 30% of their own CO2 a day on a maintenance diet. A male could consume 0.9 kilograms of CO2 or 40% of their own CO2 produced in a given day on a maintenance diet. Now, what if you increase the amount of food consumed by 50%? A woman would remove just over a kilogram of CO2 each day, and a man would remove just under 1.5 kilograms each day, or between 50 and 67% of their CO2 contribution. This still leaves a deficit, but does have an obvious benefit to the CO2 amounts. This will produce a net caloric excess intake and consequential weight gain. The excreted CO2 will not increase substantially, but the amount removed to produce and be consumed will. As an extreme example, if an average woman were to consume 150% of the recommended maintenance calories, they would remove 1.4 kilograms of CO2 and a man would remove 1.8 kilograms. Still a deficit, but far less than before. At an unreasonable level, what about a 200% increase? A woman would remove 1.75 kilograms, and a man would remove 2.25 kilograms. This leaves men at a slight negative carbon offset, and women slightly positive. This sort of diet would lead to an increase of approximately 0.9 kilograms a day. At a simply absurd increase of 300% in caloric intake, women are breaking even, and men are removing 2.7 kilograms of carbon dioxide. This leaves a deficit of 0.5 kilograms for men. This leads to an overall theoretical net capture of 0.4 kilograms of carbon dioxide each day. This mad scheme could see a reduction of human emitted CO2 of between 50 and 132 percent of global human CO2. This could have a net decrease on the overall CO2 on a global scale of 0.85 percent. On the extreme end, this is a real-world result of decreasing global CO2 emissions by about 1.7 to 2.2%, which is the largest part of the 2.2% increase in emissions seen over the last decade. In a best-case scenario, we might see the equivalent of a further 17% of human-contributed CO2 removed. This is approximately 0.19 of total global CO2 emissions. This model assumes an imperfect return on the reduction. While we are not generating a net deficit on the global CO2 amount, it would also not be made worse. As the global population increases, this effect will increase with a direct scale to the number of people participating in an excess caloric diet. How then would this mix with global warming? The answer is simple. The human body is a very efficient carbon capture net. By storing carbon dioxide in the body as fat, we can reduce the amount of atmospheric global warming. The CO2 does not leave the body at a greater rate than it is entering. As the human body keeps CO2 in fat cells, even in death, we can bury the overweight and obese who die earlier in life. These people will have acted as a massive CO2 capture device by storing the calories in their body. This will remove CO2 from the atmosphere for the foreseeable future. If we remove even 1.2 of the current 2.2% increase in CO2, we are in a far better position to technologically minimise or even mitigate the last 1% through burials, technology and different methods of capture. In summary, this possible solution 
makes them more deadly obese and overweight. Environmental heroes who have helped to reduce global warming by consuming excess quantities of food and storing the carbon dioxide that was needed to make it. Assuming you have watched this far in the video, it is obviously a tongue-in-cheek and very satirical take on resolving a complex issue like global warming from CO2 with a harebrained scheme that relies on an overly simplified mathematical model. Such a solution would carry obvious and drastic adverse health and lifestyle effects. It would be impractical for many other reasons than just getting enough food to the right places and at the right time. For full disclosure, this video was inspired by a comment seen on another YouTube video. Thank you for watching. If you have found it entertaining, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions below.